to discuss lecture number 6 uh, which is beam energy determination and calibrations and in the last lecture we talked about how the beam energy can be calculated using the voltage itself but uh, we also mentioned that uh, there is a possibility of uh, errors due to different sources and therefore the energy calculated using the terminal voltage may not be very accurate and therefore we should use some other methods which are more accurate to determine the energy of the particle beams and of course this might involve some calibrations and I will be discussing details of uh, these aspects. So beam energy determination uh, and calibration for you know that for any experiment nuclear physics experiment the most important parameter is energy particle energy and that should be known precisely. We should know the energy precisely in order to understand the nuclear physics experiment and its outcome. Now several methods have been used for energy determination and they are listed here. Some are very accurate, some are uh, having some sources of errors and as I mentioned in the last lecture, one of them is that we use generating voltmeter GVM to measure the voltage and then calculate the energy. And as we discussed in the last lecture, there could be several factors which could add to error in that. And therefore, uh, uh, there should be some other ways, some other methods for measuring the energy very accurately. Not uh, using the voltage and then multiply by the charge state and things like that. Now another method which is quite uh, accurate is using the analyzing magnet which will help in measuring the energy through nuclear reactions and the most accurate nuclear reactions which are used for measuring the energy or determining the energy are resonances or the neutron threshold experiments. These experiments, they give the ion beam energy very accurately. There is another method which is again a part of nuclear reactions is backscattering experiments for measuring the energies. And you will find in the subsequent slides that this method is very simple but gives a very accurate value of the energy and uh, does not involve many uh, errors. Some errors are automatically uh, taken care of or eliminated and therefore measurements of this energy is very accurate in the case of backscattering axon. However, in all these methods we need calibrations and you know that this whenever calibration is involved there will be some source of error or some source of uncertainties will be involved and therefore uh, it is not absolute energy but with some so as an example i will take the, i will describe the method which was used to determine the energy of the ion beams in a in an accelerator facility as BARC and which is a 6 million volt folded tandem ion accelerator. Now just to discuss with you or describe what this FOTIA means, folded tandem ion accelerator means is that we have an ion source here which produces negative ions and since it is a folded tandem ion accelerator. So there are two accelerating tube inside the column section. One is here and other one is here. 
and the negative ions are injected in the first accelerating tube here and they are already defined for example the there is a 70 degree magnet and there is a, a 20 degree electrostatic deflector using that a well defined energy energy beam is injected in the first accelerating tube this accelerating tube accelerates the negative ions by coulomb attraction and when they reach it here uh, they achieve uh, these up to here they are negative ions and the energy becomes a 6 million electron volt now you can see that uh, it has to be negative ion because it is injected here and this has to be accelerated by coulomb attraction had it been positive ions it will not go through this here because that will be repelled so these negative ions are here but if it has to come back here and then it has to be accelerated further by the coulomb repulsion in the second accelerating tube here the polarity has to be changed these negative ions have to be changed to positive ions and that is done in a in a stepper foil here stepper system here that is a stepper foil it could be foil stepper or it could be gas stepper and uh, once uh, a negative ion is changed to positive ions they can be bent by a magnet here and they will be further accelerated now the advantage here in this case is that several electrons can be removed in this process and therefore multiple charge ions are formed which are accelerated so in this is like a tandem pulled tandem and therefore the energy as i talked about in last uh, last lecture few last few lectures that the energy will be n plus 1 times the electron volts so suppose uh, uh, it is n plus 1 1 means uh, because the negative ion is singly negative ion and n is the charge state after uh, these negative ions are passed through the coil. So suppose you take a nickel ion and at 6 million volt or around that, suppose 10 electrons are removed from that, it will become 10 plus. So totally 11 electrons are removed, one negative becomes neutral and then neutral becomes positive. So suppose 11 electrons are removed from nickel negative ion it becomes 10 plus so it will be, the total energy will be 10 plus 1 so it will be 11 times 6 here so you can say that it is 66 mbv while had it been only van de graaff you know uh, which accelerates only positive ion the energy could have been only 6 mbv so that is the advantage in the case of tandem accelerators or pelotons or folded uh, tandem accelerators. Now here are the particles which are coming out. They are analyzed for energy and the mass using this analyzing magnet and then they go to the scattering chamber where the experiments are done. We know the approximate energy, uh, approximate will quite a good accuracy but for doing the resonance experiments with the uh, 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 width of uh, uh, electron volts, this energy has to be accurately known. And therefore, we have to do uh, calibration of this magnet, because that is the only thing we can do, calibration of this magnet to that accuracy. So that, uh, so that is why it is called uh, determination uh, and calibration. So what we do is that we calibrate the magnet using the known uh, known kind of uh, energies and find out these parameters which are used for the calibration and then the final energies of unknown cases can be calculated. So uh, as I mentioned that resonances are the best uh, best uh, methods to determine the energies or to calibrate the magnet which normally use in any experiment what we do is we can't touch any high voltage area so there should be some uh, simple way to measure the 
So what we do is that we uh, we calibrate this magnet, this analyzing, this full analyzing magnet using preferably some resonance kind of or threshold kind of reactions. One of the resonance method which has been very widely used for, for uh, calibrating the magnets at lower energies is uh, aluminium P gamma. So aluminium, aluminium 26 going to silicon 28. And the resonance is at 992 kV, roughly 992 kV. One of the beauty of this resonance is that its natural breadth is only 0.1 kV. That means there will not be any uncertainty in the in the locating the peak and the energy measurements can be done. Of course, in the same system, uh, we have another resonance is which is at 1.316 MeV and its width is also natural width is 0.07 keV. So that is another resonance which is used. Resonance means, resonance means here, see basically what we are talking about, let's say I will explain that uh, aluminium 27 P gamma going to 28 silicon. That means we are having a target which is aluminium 27 and a proton beam is coming and then at the output first of course first the silicon will be formed in excited states. Here in the 28 silicon in excited state, but later on this de-excitation takes place by gamma and therefore we will get 28 silicon plus we will get gamma also. So this will be this. So the reaction is uh, given here. That means the proton is hitting this and gamma is coming out and ultimately residual nucleus is 28 silicon. Now when we say resonance means, that means if you change the proton energy, Ep, and this is the counts, then you will see that at particular energy where the resonances take place, the counts will increase and then you can corresponding to this peak, you can find out the resonance and so this is actually what you are doing is the magnetic field you are increasing which is corresponding to it. So then you will know this energy you know very precisely and therefore B is proportional to E, P you can, so this you can find out. So you have to only calibrate this B, magnetic field of the magnet and that you can, for that you should know this energy very precisely and which in the case of resonances it can be done very nicely. So this is one case where resonances are used and resonances are used because their location of the peak that means the magnetic field or the which is corresponding to energy can be determined very precisely. So this uh, aluminium 27 P gamma at 992 kV and 1317 kV, these resonances are very widely used for this kind of thing. So we also use that to calibrate our magnet in cold cotia, 6 million volt cotia. So I am going to give this example uh, how this was done. So in addition to this, we also used a uh, Another simple method which I said earlier uh, was a back scattering method and uh, there the uh, as, uh, some of the errors were eliminated. Other methods which are used are also very popular and that is a neutron threshold reaction. 
and methyl tube threshold reaction means the beam is proton and at the exit channel you get neutron and this channel opens at a particular energy so you know the energy very precisely and the, so the, you know the precisely the magnetic field and then you can again find out the calibration constant from ultimately you have to calibrate the magnetic field because that is what you change uh, in the in, to you do the experiments you have no control at the high voltage because uh, that is too high and uh, this method i will be discussing uh, was done in the case of potia and it it was published here it was published in nuclear instruments and methods in 2003 so i will be talking about these four methods uh, we will discuss the details of that resonance method neutron threshold reaction non resonant reactions and backscattering now ultimately as we said that since we have not we don't have access to the high voltage which gives the energy and therefore we have to use some other component and uh, that has to be calibrated and that has to be used for determination of the energy and one such component as i mentioned in the figure was uh, uh, analyzing magnet so a precise knowledge of the absolute beam energy is essential in the field of nuclear physics atomic physics or even nuclear edge since direct measurements of megavolts voltage with sufficient accuracy is not possible a magnetic analyzer is normally used for energy determination and that principle is given here that suppose there is a magnet here a sector magnet a magnet here and the beam is coming a well defined beam and if there is a magnetic field here uh, which has north and south pole and uh, b is the velocity here and b is the magnetic field then you will see that this band as per the lorentz force will be following a circular path and we will be coming out of this and only a beam of particular energy will be coming out which i will be giving in next slide now just to give you an idea then order of uh, things here if this is a this magnet is cut this sector magnet sector is cut from a circle here you will see that uh, the beam is bent by 90 degrees so that means theta is 90 degree so this is the theta and suppose the r is the radius of the circle from which this magnet is come then the radius of curvature if theta is equal to 90 degree then general expression is this that rho which is radius of curvature is r times tangent theta by 2 and in this case if the theta is 90 degree then rho is equal to r and let's say we call it a small r as i mentioned that rho is radius of curvature r is the radius and if theta is 90 degree then rho is equal to r so the things are simple here if it is 90 degree but it could be any angle it could it need not be 90 degree it could be any angle and correspondingly then we have to calculate the rho and the theta yes. when we have this magnet and the beam is a uh, well defined beam is entering the magnet then it will follow the it will experience the lorentz force and uh, that is given by it will follow a circular path and that is given as mb square upon r is equal to q times v cross b v is the velocity and b is the magnetic field in which this uh, particle is moving if v the velocity is perpendicular to b to the uh, magnetic field that means magnetic field is like this and the particle is moving this way then it will follow this uh, then the 
then we can write that v cross b is equal to which is equal to b v v b sin 90 degree and is equal to v so this is the this is only for 90 degree but you can write the general expression that it is equal to b b sin then in that case since we are considering 90 degree then this equation this equation gets converted into v square m divided by r is equal to q times v b and therefore you can from this equation we can write b r is equal to m v square upon q v or is equal to v. Now this m v is nothing but the momentum of the particle, q is the charge. Now let us write that half m v square is the energy, kinetic energy, e is the kinetic energy, particle energy. If we use this from this one, we can write the value of uh, uh, v here in in terms of energy, then we can write V times dr is equal to m times q root of 2 times this, uh, 2e divided by m. Or we can write, you take this m inside, you can write that 1 by q into root of e 2 times me. Now this was the m is the total mass. Uh, suppose it is proton and uh, this m not is the rest mass. Uh, this m is the mass at that velocity. So if velocity is high, as I mentioned in the first lecture, m can change drastically. In fact, it can become even uh, very high mass. So let's say it is a times mass of the particle is a times m naught m naught is a rest mass so total mass even at low energy it is a times that let's say it is oxygen so oxygen mass will be uh, 16 times the mass of the proton roughly equal to equal to that so if you write this then this br becomes 1 by q now the, this q capital q is the charge state this was the total charge the small q was the total charge. So 1 by q e, that means charge state times the unit mass, a uh, unit charge, root of this. Now m is equal to a times m naught, where m naught is the rest mass, and q is equal to this. So if you write this whole thing into the equation, then the b from this equation becomes equal to root times 2 m naught divided by R e and this is root times a e by q square. This can also be written as b is equal to k times root of a e by q square. q is the charge state now and the rest of the factors have been absorbed in this because for any magnet radius of curvature is fixed, m naught is fixed. Uh, so for any system these parameters are fixed and this is equal to k so that means for a particular magnet k value is fixed because k is given as equal to root of that 2 m naught divided by r e so these are all fixed parameters so k has to be fixed and therefore b is equal to this so any accelerator the, the magnetic field required to bend the beam of uh, energy E and mass number A and charge state Q is given by this expression. This, this is a fundamental equation which is used for. So you will see that for any accelerator magnet, uh, uh, what we give is K, K value you will give. So for example, in the case of cycloton, at uh, VEC Kolkata for room temperature cycloton K is equal to 130. So depending upon the, uh, what is the charge state, what is the A value or what is the energy, the B magnetic field will be has to be. So B is known. So if you know this equation, if you know the K value, 
then you can find the energy of particle and of course the uh, magnetic field accurately you know the charge state you know the mass number then the energy of that particle can be cal can be uh, known very accurately now here the energy will be accurate if b is accurate but b is measured very accurately using nmr um, nmr gauss meter nmr gauss meter accuracy is of the uh, very high order and therefore b is very accurately hence to know the energy of the particle we should know what is the k precisely we know b very carefully so therefore if you want to know e very accurately then we should know the k value so initially uh, we should know what is the k value of that magnet here you can see from this equation you can see that k is proportional to 1 by r 1 by r r is the radius of curvature so this radius of curvature will be defined how uh, accurately the trajectories are followed now suppose if the beam is diverging then the radius of curvature of all the particles will not be same now radius of curvature is fixed only for a particular particle and therefore you have to calculate uh, you have to you have to know the radius of curvature of the beam and as i said that if it is a diverging or converging beam then the radius of curvature of all the particles in the beam need not be same but for central trajectory r is known because that is how you have designed the designed the magnet and once you know the r then k is fixed so k is fixed for a particular r radius of curvature so diverging input or converging input the the r can vary so this is how the basic thing is uh,